Luke chapter 12, and we're going to uh, look at um, Luke chapter 12, verse 11. Let's go to Luke chapter 12 and verse 11. Say amen if you have it. All right. Uh, just say, take your time, Pastor. Okay, I got all the support from my left side. This is the anointed side. The rest of you, you need to repent right now. Amen. I will. Amen. Amen. Say, take your time, Pastor. All right, all you religious folk who want to limit me to 22 minutes and 35 seconds, the devil is a liar. Luke chapter 12, verse 11. The Bible says, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. God, we pray that you will strengthen us according to the preaching, the teaching, and the revelation of your word by your spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. Before you're seated, look at somebody and just ask them, what should you say? You know, we don't always know the right thing to say in life. Amen. Sometimes we put our foot in our mouths and we say the wrong thing. Sometimes we say the right thing at the, right t at the wrong time. Sometimes we, see, we say the wrong thing at the right time. But every once in a while, we get it right. And we say the right thing at the right time. Amen. Amen. Lift your hand and say, it is my desire, is my desire. from today on, today on to say the right thing right. at the right time. Right. Now give God a praise for it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The story that surrounds this teaching and this narrative of this account of Jesus dealing with his disciples as he prepares them for the future. How many of you are glad that God has prepared you for the future? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He prepares them for the future and gives them a word in due season. He says, when you are brought before synagogues. He doesn't say if, he says when. He's saying this is an absolute eventuality. This is going to happen. This is going to take place. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, he says, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. Do not worry. Hunt your neighbor and just tell him, come on, do not worry. Amen. He says, do not worry about what you'll say. He says, for the Holy Spirit will teach you. Anybody glad about it this morning? For the Holy Spirit will teach you, will instruct you. We've been dealing with this series now on the Holy Spirit, our instructor, our teacher. So he has this ongoing relationship to us and responsibility to teach us what we should know and what we should say and how we should live. He says the Holy Spirit will teach you or instruct you at that time what you should say. He will instruct you as to what should come out of your mouth. He will instruct you as to what is to be revealed in you and then out of you. When you are brought before them. Now Jesus tells them this for one very important reason. They, the disciples knew based on what Jesus said that they were going to have to appear before magistrates and authorities and rulers and people who had control, religious rulers, critics of all kind, people who would malign them, people who would look at them sideways because of their faith and because of their relationship with Christ. And they knew that they then would have to appear before these people. These people before they would appear, whom they would appear, who had power and had authority, power to put them in prison, power to kill them, power to destroy them, should they choose and should they have the authority or the right to do so. And these disciples then 
knew. They were simple men. These are ordinary men. These are, you know, only one of them was just kind of a, a bureaucrat or an aristocrat of some kind. Matthew, he was a tax collector, but really he was a lackey for the Romans. And, but you've got others who are fishermen and they're tradesmen and they're common folk. They're blue-collar laborers. These are not people who've been educated in the universities of uh, Gamaliel. These are not people who have stood and studied under the scribes and those who were the learned of the day. These are simple men and they knew that they would never be able to get the upper hand in a religious dispute or debate with the well-educated Jewish leaders. Uh, they look at these and say, no, I, we, can't, we can't contend with them. They're too wise, they're too smart, they're too knowledgeable. We cannot in any way, shape or form be able to deal with them. Jesus says, but I don't want you to worry about them. I don't want you to worry about their faces. I, I don't want you to worry about their positions. I don't want you to worry about their titles. I don't want you to worry about what they might say or what they might have the authority to do. And I want to assure you that when you're brought before these authorities, you will be empowered. See, when the Spirit of God comes, Jesus said what? He said you will receive Amen. The Holy Ghost doesn't come to make you afraid. He comes to give you power over fear. Power over timidity and power over trepidation and give you a sense that you are absolutely large and in charge because he is large and in charge inside of you. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world, the Bible says. So he assures them that when they're brought before these authorities, they would be empowered to speak a divine message. As plainly and as forcefully and as clearly and succinctly as did the Old Testament prophets. He was saying the same spirit that spoke through Isaiah will speak through you. The same spirit who empowered Elijah will empower you. The same spirit that enabled Elisha will enable you. The same spirit that caused the prophets to raise their voice like a trumpet and speak and declare the oracles of God. He said that same spirit will be in you. For he will not just be with you, but he shall be in you. And so it is then he gives them the assurance that they will be able to speak a divine word under a prophetic utterance and unction. He said, you'll be inspired, you will be empowered, you'll be enabled by the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 19 says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. In other words, the things that are yet to come are given you to be able to speak by the Holy Ghost. Not by a fortune teller and not by Miss Cleo, but by the Holy Ghost of God, the spirit of prophecy who knows all things, who is the guardian of absolute divine wisdom and truth, who has the ability to impart and to reveal and to quicken to you things that you know not of in your natural mind. For the things of the spirit be not perceived, nor are they conceived by the natural ability, but only by the spirit of the living God. And so it is, he assures them that that same spirit, the spirit of prophecy, the spirit who reveals, the spirit who speaks and declares uh, and moves into realms of the unknown to reveal the known, uh, only to God will reveal it to you and then they and you will be able to speak under that same anointing, that same power, that same unction, that same fresh wind of the Holy Ghost will breathe right through you and you will open your mouth and decree a word in due season. He promised them that they would be enabled, inspired, and empowered, and not only that, but they would be sustained by the Holy Spirit. I'm glad that he doesn't come and live with us as he did in the Old Testament. The Bible says in the Old Testament he would come and he would light upon them. It said he would come upon them, but what you need to understand is that that, that revelation of the Spirit of God was temporary and transitory. He would come and he would rest on them and then he would lift off of them. He would come and he would rush forcefully through them and they would do great and mighty things. They would do exploits and they would do amazing things and signs and wonders and miracles and revelations of truth and divine knowledge would come pouring out of them simply because the Spirit of God would rest on them and abide in them for a moment. But then he would leave. 
The reason why he would leave is because he could not dwell with man because of man's inability to retain him. Why? Because there is a definite inconsistency and an incongruity between the flesh and the spirit. He said, I can't live here. I can stay here for a moment, but I can't live here. But Jesus gives them a promise. He says, he will not just be with you, but he will be in you. What made the transition? What was the catalyst? The catalyst was when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God came and he rested upon him and he remained on him. Not because he needed it, but because you needed it. He received him for you. That baptism was for you. So that when he comes to live in you, he will never ever leave you nor forsake you and so you have the ongoing ever living unceasing revelation of the spirit of God in your life every single second of every single minute of every single hour of every single day and week and month and year of your life as long as you live until he comes breaking through the clouds of glory to take you home if anybody gets even a little bit happy about that you ought to put your hands together give God a worthy praise right now because he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. I don't care what you do. Jesus promised him they would be empowered and not only empowered but sustained by that same Holy Spirit who would give them access to things that were spiritually taught. And Jesus said, I'm not expecting you to dig into the history books and get revelation knowledge. I'm not expecting you to be able to stand toe-to-toe with the authorities. I'm not expecting you to match the wit and the wisdom and the understanding of the scribes and the teachers. I'm not expecting that out of you. I'm expecting, however, that you get a hold of something I said, get a hold of something you read, get a hold of something, retain it for a moment, and at the right time, in due time, at the very moment you need it, the Spirit of God who lives in you will quicken that thing, bring it up out of the story, bank and release it to you so that you can reveal that right out of your mouth and what you say will have an impact on its hearer. He said, I'm going to give you access to secret things. Oh God. Things that are spiritually taught. I've said it many times, it bears repeating this morning that Shortly after I got saved, that God gave me my life verse, Isaiah 45 and 3. I will give you riches stored in secret places, treasures hidden in darkness. Ah, God, that you might know that I am the Lord your God who summons you by name. See, not so I can be lauded and applauded. He said, I'm not, he didn't say I'm going to give you revelation so people can go, Ooh, wow, listen to that. Man, he's heavy. No. He said, I'm going to give you access. Uh, you're going to have to dig. You're going to have to go into the dark. You're going to have to go into the secret place. You're going to go have to into that place where nobody else has gone before. But if you'll get ready, if you'll get ready, and if you'll be willing to go in there, I will let you dig in there and find treasures. <laughs> secret things yet to be revealed uh, things that man has not thought of man has not even perceived uh, nor conceived but I by my spirit uh, will allow you to get into things that, that I put there centuries before things that I stored up in there before the foundation of the world and I'll let you dig those treasures out with the light of the Holy Ghost uh, in your spirit uh, and allow you to know and to reveal and to teach uh, not for your glory but for my mind that you might know that I am the Lord your God who summons you by your name he promised them that they would have access to things that are spiritually taught it's one thing to get information it's another thing to get revelation I've said it many times information without revelation is propaganda but information with revelation produces transformation He said, I'm going to give you revelation knowledge by the Spirit. I'm going to give you appropriate words in their time of need. And those words that I give you will not be able to be resisted. They will not be able to be thwarted. They will not be able to be put down. 
Once an eternal word comes out of your mouth, having been given to you by my eternal spirit, the things of the world cannot, cannot battle against it. The things of the world cannot thwart it. Uh, you see, listen, you, ah, God, you can, never, you can never fight against an eternal word with a temporary word. Man only has a temporal word, but God has an eternal world word. That's why we live and we move and in him we have our being. And that's why every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is able to sustain you and to give you everything you need in your life. He's almost going to give you eternal words that thwart and fight against and demolish strongholds and pull down imaginations and come against every principality and power, no matter who they are, whether they be physical or spiritual. I'm going to give you words that cannot be resisted. The Holy Spirit, he told them, would guide them into all truth. And when he did, he would take from what was stored in the words of Jesus and make it known to them. He said he will not teach you of his own accord. He said, but he will take what is in me. He will take what has been stored in me. He will take what is said by me. He will take the truths of eternity and he will have the right and the access. Oh God. He has access to truth because he is the guardian of truth. And I will allow him, he is, it is his responsibility, it is his right, we have a co-joined responsibility to give knowledge, transmit knowledge, to relate knowledge, and to discover knowledge, and pull knowledge out of that which has been stored up. He and he alone, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of prophecy, has the right and the authority to go in and get things that you can't get. But he said, I'm going to let him uh, because we have an agreement. He's enabled already. Why? Because he's God just like me. We are all part of this one God. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Each of them have a specific role and a specific function. No one else has access to those things except him. But he has the ability and the authority to reveal them to you. And so it is, he said, I will make these things known by my spirit. And he will speak them to you and then he will speak them through you all you have to know is what God knows well the devil no listen the devil's knowledge is this big the, the, the devil knows the devil knows about this much he is limited. All he knows is the past. I'm going to help somebody in here this morning. I said all he knows is the past. The only thing that he has access to regarding the future is what's already written in here. But he has no spiritual capacity to understand. So he's going to be misguided, misdirected, and he's going to be completely confused and diffused. Why? Because he's a liar and he is the father of lies. So even if he reads the truth, it'll come out as a lie. So whatever he speaks to you regarding your future is a lie. When he tells you you'll die, he's a liar. When he tells you you're going to be broke, busted, and disgusted, he's a liar. When he tells you that God's going to leave you in the future, he's a liar. He doesn't even know how to discern truth. He doesn't know how to speak truth. He has limited knowledge, but God has eternal knowledge that is from eternity to eternity, from the end to the beginning, the beginning and the end, everything in between, that which has been established before the foundations of the world. God has all 
all of that in his hand, spoken by Jesus, uh, revealed in and through you by the Holy Ghost. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, what the devil knows or doesn't know. All you need to worry about is that you know the God uh, who is eternal and the God who has all power and all authority and all knowledge and all glory in his hand. That's all you need to know. I feel that in here. I feel that in here. Somebody give God a praise right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody give God a Holy Ghost praise right now. Come on. Put your hands together. Open your mouth and give him some glory. Jesus said, I don't want you to worry about a thing. He said, the Holy Spirit will supply you with words of kingdom authority. What he speaks to you has kingdom authority. He said, I'm going to cause and make sure, and it is the responsibility of the Holy Ghost of God, the Spirit of prophecy, to give you and supply you with words of kingdom authority that are of a higher level than the words decreed by ecclesiastical hierarchies and governmental authorities. In other words, it doesn't matter what the highest court says because there is a court that is higher than that court. It doesn't matter what that authority says because there is an authority higher than that authority. It doesn't matter what that principality says or decrees or declares or reveals because the prince of glory has already given you authority to walk in power and might and decree a thing and say a thing and it must override and supersede anything that the enemy speaks. And so it is, he says, that he will supply you with these words and he promises them this very thing in this verse for the spirit the holy spirit will teach you at that time what you should say hunt your neighbor one more time and ask him what should you say jesus promised then prepared them for the experiences described in the book of acts all throughout the book of Acts, you see them confronting religious critics. All throughout the book of Acts, you see the disciples in the early church confronting those that are in uh, ecclesiastical authority and those who have the power to put them in prison, those who have the power to take their life. Acts chapter 4, the healing of the, of the blind beggar or the beggar at the gate beautiful. The Bible tells us that they were arrested and the disciples were taken in, brought before the magistrates, the authorities, the Pharisees, all those who were gathered together as the intelligentsia of the religious world at that time. And they're brought before them and they say, we tell you, you cannot speak anymore in this name. We're done with you. We're tired of you running around here doing these signs and wonders in this name of Jesus. Uh-uh. No more of that. You shut your mouth. And their response was this. Uh, here once these guys who had been timid and they'd been reticent and they'd been reluctant to even say things and know things and to teach things uh, and to have the audacity to open their mouths and speak for God. Uh, oh no, they stood before these men and they said it this way they said we're it is better for us uh, to obey God rather than man um, we're not gonna obey you we don't have to listen to you we understand you have some limited authority but it is limited we serve the God who has unlimited authority unlimited power unlimited right unlimited jurisdiction we serve the God who is the creator of every single thing that lives and breathes and moves uh, we serve the God who have, is of eternity past to eternity future we serve that God and as a matter of fact he not only urges us to speak in his name he not only encourages us to speak in his name for we cannot help speak what we have seen and what we have heard we cannot help but declare what has been told to us in the darkness and now we reveal in the light he we cannot help but say things and speak things and deliver things unto you by the authority of living God as a matter of fact he he lives on the inside of us and he insists that we do so we will not stop speaking in the name about the name of the name and for the name that's above every other name the name of Jesus if you know that name you ought to give that name a praise right now
these words that they were given by the Holy Ghost were able to confront the opposition of the Pharisees. With those words, they denounced the accusations made by religious critics. He promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit would come to their aid and teach them what to say at the time of persecution. He said he will teach you at that time. I say at that time. That word time there means moment. There are moments in your life when you don't know what to say. There are moments in your life when you're confronted by your past. There are moments in your life when you're confronted by critics. There are moments in your life where you're confronted with the reality of your own fatality. There are moments in your life when you are confronted by people who want to put you down, bring you down, criticize you, ostracize you for naming the name and declaring the name of Jesus. There are moments in your life when people who are of this world want to shut you up. And it's okay to call around to speak about Buddha. It's okay to talk about Confucius. It's okay to talk about the latest ilk and the latest sect that comes out of mysticism or Eastern thought or religion or the latest craze. It's okay to do that in the workplace. People don't have a problem with you talking about that. People don't even have a problem anymore. Now it's the popular thing to talk about Buddha and Islam and Muhammad and Allah. Now that's popular. But Jesus is not popular. But I call upon a people in the name of Jesus uh, who are the remnant of the body of Christ uh, who don't care what anybody says uh, who will stand up lift their voice uh, like a trumpet and say I declare that there is one name and one name alone whereby man can must and should be saved it is the name above every other name the name of Jesus the Christ the son of the living God the lamb of God uh, the God of glory the lamb slain before the foundation of the world uh, he who is from eternity past to eternity future the bright and the morning star the lily of the valley the fairest of 10,000 to my soul my hope and my salvation and my rock and my fort that name that name that name Jesus the name that calms my fears Jesus the name that causes sorrow to cease Jesus that causes doubts to vanish Jesus that causes demons to tremble and darkness to flee Jesus the name I power and authority over every single thing that you'll ever confront. Stand up in that name. Give God glory in that name. Open your mouth and decree and declare that name for that is the only name by which we can be saved. He said, I am promising you the Holy Spirit will come And he will teach you at that time, at that moment. He says, these spirit-empowered words are faith words. They're words of faith spoken by people of faith. See, because if I declare a thing, if I say what God already said, if I repeat what has already been revealed, I'm doing it in faith. I'm speaking it knowing that if I say it, it should come to pass. It must come to pass. Because if he spoke it, and I repeat it, it has to be released in the earth. Speak a thing, reveal a thing, declare a thing, and it shall be established, the Bible says. He said, I'm going to give you words by my spirit who will instruct you and he will teach you at that moment of necessity. And those words that are spirit empowered, spoken by you, who are the people of faith, will not only deliver you at that time. I'm glad for a at that time word. Anybody ever have a moment when you need a word in due season and just at the right time? Just at the... God, just as the right time, like the blind man who was healed, 
And the Pharisees and all the authorities got him in front of them. And they said, who healed you? Who did this to you? Tell me about his mama. Tell me about his daddy. Tell me his history. Tell me of everything you know. He said, I don't even know his name. But I know this. I was blind and now I'm, I can see. See, sometimes you all, all you need is a right now I was blind and now I see moment. All you need sometimes is I was lost and now I'm found. I was on my way to hell and now I'm on my way to glory. I was bound and now I'm set free. Sometimes all you need is a simple word, but it's a word that has power to deal with and battle against every word that man ever utters out of his mouth. I'm glad for a, at, at that moment word. Uh, I'll never forget being with a, 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 a man who I was in ministry with for a time and we were confronted. It was a long story. I'm not going to go into it, but we were confronted literally by a demoniac in the street. We had, just, we had just released some people out of bondage and we saw the angels of God. It was an amazing moment. Powerful. And just as we got through in ministry, in the street, we, we got into our car and we were driving and, and I came across an intersection and as we were standing in the inter intersection, reflecting on what had happened, what just happened, all the glory of God that had been revealed. All of a sudden, there was this man quietly walking across the front of our vehicle and he's walking in the crosswalk. Didn't think too much of him, didn't think too much out about him. He looked like everybody else on the street. And all of a sudden, I had my window down. All of a sudden... He walked right in front of the car and then walked right up to the driver's side where I was. We were at the red light. And he stood there, and all of a sudden he began to scream at us. A total demoniac, completely full of the devil, screaming and yelling and cursing. Now, you know, in the natural, I'm either going to run or I'm going to hit him. You know, one of the, you know one or the other? But I knew neither one of those things would work. So I just looked at him. He's right here in my face. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Bye! He ran like, you, like, like somebody was shooting after him. I thank God for right now moments. I thank God for at that time moments. But what you need to understand, and I'm through today, but what you need to understand is this. That there's words that have come to you at that time, that words that delivers you, that, that word that releases you at that time, at that time. Everybody say at that time. Those at that time words are words that will open doors to the next time that you need to be shown what to say. Because one word releases another word. One revelation reveals another revelation. One empowered season gives way to the next season. One door that's pushed open by the power of a spoken rhema word will release the next door that you have to go through. And I came to tell you this morning that whatever word is about ready to come out of your mouth uh, will not only save you, deliver you, rescue you in this present season, in this present moment, but it will be the next stepping stone to the next door, the next season, the next moment that you confront uh, and that you will need a word for. In every season, there shall be a word given to you uh, that pulls down principalities uh, and destroys powers and comes against every imagination of the enemy and every lie of Satan's hell. There is a word in your mouth that you have not yet spoken. There is a word in your spirit that has not yet been revealed. There is a word in the repository of the person of the Holy Ghost who is holding it for just the right season, just the right moment. And when you need it, it's going to come flying out of your mouth like a jet propelled a torpedo and destroy everything in its path yeah. that word that's given to you will open doors to the next time you need to be shown what to say the Holy Spirit of God the spirit of prophecy will give you words that silence fear, that bring calm into chaos, that give comfort in trial, 
and give peace for anxiety. Words that are spoken in that time set the stage for the next time. I came to tell you this morning that there is a word in you right now. I want you to stand. I want you to lift your hands. We're going to sing. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they're safe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as we do, I want you to lay hold of a word that's in you right now. You say, Pastor, well, I don't know it yet. You don't need to know it yet. All you need to know is that there is a word in you for the next season. There's a word in you for the next moment. There's a word in you for the next confrontation. There's a word in you for the next doubt. There's a word in you for the next moment of confusion. There's a word in you for the next battle that you're going to face. There's a, next, there's a word in you for the next critic that's going to come against you. There's a word in you that's going to confront and destroy and defeat and pull down every principality and power, every wickedness in high places, every doubt and fear that's in your own mind, every lie that comes out of the mouth of the enemy. There is a word in you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be confused. You don't have to say, what am I going to say and how am I going to say it and when should I? The Spirit of Almighty God God uh, is going to come pouring out of you with words uh, that cannot be resisted and words that cannot be defeated. I want you to give God a praise, first of all, for the last word you got. Come on and praise him for the at that, that, that time word. Uh, give him glory for that one. Come on, just thank him because that was a good one. Uh, that was a great word. Uh, that was a powerful word. Uh, now I want you to praise him for the next word. Uh, that's getting ready to come out of your mouth.